How is it going guys? Slippery Jim here. Welcome back to my playthrough of Terraria. And in the last episode, uh, we did a fair bit of work on the arena. Uh, created a new switchable volcano trap at the bottom of that with a safety box and some added some buffs as well, like the Bast statue and stuff like that. Uh, but in this episode, what I want to do is I actually want to fight uh, at least one more boss, which is probably going to be Queen Slime, one of the new uh, bosses in the um, in the Hallowed area. Um, but there's a few other things that I want to get done as well, including the Old Ones Army Stage 2, uh, which is going to be pretty tough. But before we get too ambitious here in this episode, one thing that I wanted to try out is I want to see if I can get the glowing lava moss to spread down the uh, the elevator shaft. So I actually grab some and uh, I'm going to see if I can plant this in the size of the, uh, the elevator and get it to spread. Um, I think it'll look pretty cool because it glows uh, in the dark and it's it, it might look really awesome. We'll go down about, let's have a look here. We'll go down to about here. And then we'll go down to about here and we'll put one on each side. That should do it. So I'm hoping this looks really cool. So I'll put some more down here as well. Nice! Alright guys, what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to try and fight the Old Ones army. Um, I'm expecting to get completely owned in the final stages of this, but um, I'm hoping also that we can get enough of the, um, what are they called, um, Defender Medals to buy some of the upgraded uh, items, particularly the upgraded um, Ballista um, that would be pretty sweet if we can get a hold of that. Um, anyway, let's put away a fishing rod and stuff like that. Okay. I think we're ready to get started here with the Old Ones Army. Stage 2. Where is the crystal stand? Ah, uh, here it is. So I'm going to put this down here in the middle. And uh, let's put the crystal in it. I want to make sure I'm zoomed out to the max. Here we go. Stage one. Should be pretty easy the first stage or two, but I'm interested to see. Interested to see what changes there are. Let's try out this poison stuff. Oh, it's got pretty good penetration, but the range is not so great. I think the uh, Crystal Serpent or the uh, this thing, Rainbow, Rainbow Rod's the way to go. I'll take these little guys out. Creepy little devils with their cleavers. We got some bigger ones coming at the back. Yeah, the, the Crystal Serpent is starting to get a little bit uh, underpowered, I think. Like, let's put, a, let's put a Ballista down there. I've only got the Stage 1 Sentries, unfortunately, but um, as we earn more Defender Medals, hopefully I can start upgrading these to the Stage 2. But uh, I didn't really have any Defender Medals from... Um, Oh, what the hell is this thing? Oh my goodness. Okay, there's a few new, uh, there's a few new guys attacking me here. Let's debuff. Um, at least we haven't had to worry about the women so far. They're the, they were the big challenge in the stage one fight. Oh, there's some more of these dudes. It definitely helps though having the asphalt blocks here on the surface because I can sprint from one side to the other super quickly. 
It's um, it would be uh, it would be a lot easier doing this with uh, more than one player. I'm not sure if they'd scale the enemies. They probably would, though, right? They probably scale the enemies if you have more than one player. Well, there's probably more of them or something. Um, let's just make sure these have got all those little mana things. I wish there was a way of figuring out if you had enough to place another sentry or not. Well, there's another one of these. Oh no, they're coming from the other side as well. Okay. Stage wave three. Uh oh, we got the Wivens coming. Uh, oh no, there's a lot of them. This is not good. Stay away! They can actually go through blocks, that's interesting. Oh no. Keep these guys back. Oh no! Damn it! Oh, one of those explosive dudes just uh, detonated on the crystal. Oh no. <laughs> this is all going south pretty quick here. Oh, we beat wave three though. That was a close one. Uh, let's try and put some more ballistas up if we can. Try and put them up high. Take out those wivens. Yeah, we got a little dinosaur dude now. Look at him. He's like a little raptor or something. Uh, let's try and put these Nimbus clouds up. I'm not sure where the best place for those is. Okay, we've got a lot of wivens already here. They look completely different to the actual Terraria wivens, so <laughs> the normal ones in, uh, up in the sky. Oh god! I just got... Oh no! Oh no! I'm pretty sure we're gonna fail this wave. Yep. Damn, that is a lot harder. That's a huge, that's a huge step up in difficulty. I think we still had three waves to go to uh, to actually beat it. I hate to think how hard the uh, final wave is. Man, it's just so difficult protecting that uh, that crystal. We got one defender's medal. Oh no! I think I need twenty-five to get the next level of century. So it could take a while to uh, to grind that many medals. Well, I've got 28 Defender medals now, and I'm starting to get a few of the Ethereum monster uh, banners, which hopefully will make things easier. So I'm going to keep grinding at this until we can upgrade our uh, sentries. I've noticed that this thing's not really working though, right? The, um, the heart statue? Um, I did wire it up to a switch, but... Pretty much, it only um, seems to be pumping out the hearts when I flick the switch. So maybe I need to change that a little bit. Um, I think I might be able to put a timer mechanism on that to automatically um, flick the switch for me. Uh, I remember seeing something similar to that um, that I could buy from the mechanic. So uh, yeah, let's try and figure that out first, because it's going to help if I can um, get a steady supply of hearts during the actual Old Ones army fight. Um, now, I'm just trying to figure out where the, usually the mechanic, let's see what I've got in here. I used to have the mechanic in this hut, but I think I moved her actually. I don't, I don't think I've got any timers in here. I will need some more wire probably. So let's grab some of that. And if I recall correctly, I think I put her into the igloo base. So we'll go over there and see if she can sell us something that will allow us to um, pretty much have the heart statue firing automatically. Let's grab those taxes. What's your quest? Fishertron, huh? I might actually have one of those. Uh, oh, yep. There we go. 
Beautiful. Hand that in. Uh, we got a mine carp. Okay. I think I've already got one of those, actually, but it's pretty cool. I think you can actually use this minecart in water. Although, why you would want to do that, I'm not... <laughs> yeah, I've already got one. So, we can actually sell this to uh, the wizard here. There you go. Um, yeah, let's... Um, actually, before I do that, let me just make sure... We have all our buffs going and stuff like that. Um, and we're going to head over to the igloo. See what the mechanics got for me over here. Um, Alright, let's see. Ah. So there's two timers here. Half second, I guess. Activates every fourth. Yeah, well, I guess we'll buy the half second timer. It probably doesn't matter too much which one it is. Um, that's probably all that we're going to need to... So, if I understand this correctly, um, what that should do is activate the switch automatically every half second. Okay. Has she got anything else here that I want to buy? This is the party girl. Uh, might actually get a couple of those in case I need it another time. If I find another hard statue, we'll be able to put that somewhere else. Um, let's see. I might put that in there for now. Because, uh, yeah, let's just switch up some of our gear here. Make sure I've got my food buff going. And uh, let's talk to the tavern keep because I want to see how much his upgraded stuff is. Uh, we've got the flame burst, cane, 53 summon damage, 25 defender medals. Oh, we can actually buy one of these now. Um, I think. Yes. This must be the tier 2 one, right? I might actually get the flame burst one. Um, because I think later on, the actual sorcerer style, um, Old One's Army armor that he sells actually buffs the flame burst sentries rather than the ballista sentries. I do like the ballista sentries, but, um... Ultimately, I think it's going to be better in the long run to have the Flame Burst ones. We'll see how they go anyway. Um, I can always get both. Um, let's just wire this up though. I hope this is going to work. So we should just um, have to put the timer in the chain here. Between the HUD statue and the switch. Put another... Section of wire there. And then put the switch back down. And basically if I turn this on, hopefully every half second it's going to trigger that and pop out a heart for me. Let's see, is that going to work? Is that on right? Oh, there we go. Yeah. Okay. That's working now. Cool. All right. Problem solved. Uh, nice. I think I deserve my Terrarian Electrical Engineering Certificate now. Alright, let's try these Flame Burst uh, Sentries out and see how we go. Oh no! I was, uh, I felt like I was pretty close there to beating, beating it, uh, but... Uh, at least on the upside, the Flame Burst, um, Sentries are actually really good. And uh, I even managed to beat the uh, mini boss, the ogre, I think it is. So we're getting some defender medals going. Um, and I got this thing here, the Tome of Infinite Wisdom, I think, dropped from the ogre, along with the ogre mask and this thing, the Rash Squire's Shield. Increases your max number of sentries by one and minion damage by 10%. So this looks like a an old one's army style accessory. Trouble is, 
it would be good, but I'm not sure I'd want to swap anything out that I'm wearing right now. Um, but we definitely definitely want to try out this um, Tome of Infinite Wisdom because this is a magic weapon. So it looks like it fires kind of a burst fire type uh, effect. Oh, hang on. Right click to cast a powerful tornado. So it's got... it's Oh, look at that. It's got an alternate fire. <laughs> I didn't even think that was a thing in Terraria. That's pretty cool. Look at that. Okay, let's try this old one's army fight again. I'm going to get all my buffs. I'm slowly getting further and further, I feel. It's just the, um, the final... The final wave where you have um, the ogres coming in, it's pretty tough to take them out quick enough before they uh, before they smash your face in and destroy the um, the um, crystal, right? So we'll see how we go because I've been finding these sentries are quite good, and um, not only that, the Tome of Infinite Wisdom is pretty sweet because it's got really powerful knockback when I use the, um, when I use the, like, uh, the twister type attack on it, uh, which is good for the little, little guys like these guys here. It doesn't really do much against the, um, the ogres, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, stage two Old One's Army is pretty, pretty hard. <laughs> I hate to think what the stage three is going to be like um, when when that's unlocked down the track. Um, let's put some more of these these clouds up. But yeah, I think it's it's mainly about managing those Ethereum um, that Ethereum mana stuff and like uh, because there's there's as far as I can tell there's only exactly enough if you collect all of it at the end of every round to get the extra. The extra sentries that you need and I've been trying to position them so there's a few up top here um, to take out the wyverns and stuff like that um, and I've really got to kill the wyverns super quickly before they damage the crystal as well um, but these first few waves are pretty easy to be honest um, it's really only the last few waves pretty much the last wave the last half of the of the last wave is what I've been struggling with here. Um, I've been saving up my Defender medals as well because I noticed that there's um, an item called the Defender's Forge that the uh, the Tavern Keep sells. And I want to buy that uh, because I'm pretty sure it gives me an extra inventory um, similar to the safe. So that would be pretty cool. So I'm always running out of space. Um, Alright, let's go with wave three. Pretty much just got enough time in between waves to set things up here. Got to refresh all my uh, Nimbus clouds and stuff like that. Uh, I think this is where we start getting the Wivens. Coming in. Dive bombing. It's actually, there's another flying... There's another flying creature as well. Plus, there's also some some of these guys. I think they're kobolds. Um, they actually have like a <laughs> a suicide vest type thing on, and they'll they'll like rush at the uh, the crystal if you don't kill them quick enough. Try and blow it up. There's a weapon right there. I need to get rid of that. Yeah, but this um. This Tome of Infinite Wisdom is pretty awesome, actually. I guess it's probably designed to be useful for the Old One's Army, right? Because it did drop from um, an Old One's Army boss, mini boss type thing. Um, okay, let's get some sentries going here. And I've finally figured out, too. I, I was like, when I started, um, started this, I was like, man, I really wish there was some way to tell... How many more of those uh, Ethereum mana crystal things I need to actually summon another sentry? But there's actually a counter on the actual um, hot bar for the sentry, which tells me that I figured it out eventually. So <laughs> I guess it's a bit of a learning curve with figuring out where to set things up and stuff. 
Okay, let's try and debuff the big guys. Kill the wyverns. Knock these guys back a little bit. But yeah, I want to make sure the crystal is um is at max health if possible here in these early rounds. It has taken a little bit of damage. I don't know if it uh, regains health over time or not. Let's kill this guy. Okay, that looks like wave four done. Let's try put some more uh, sentries up top here, I think. Put one up there. Um, try and have a couple of those. But what I've been trying to do to prepare for the final round is I want to have a bunch of sentries um, up close to the crystal to um, help take out the ogre. The ogre is pretty tough though because um, if it hits you with this, uh, I don't know what the attack is, but it, it almost freezes you. It slows you down big time. Let's kill that one. One thing up there. <laughs> this is kind of fun though. I don't mind this. It's uh, sort of a wave-based survival similar to uh, Call of Duty Zombies in some ways. So I guess it's uh, right up my alley. From what I've heard, apparently this is a crossover with another game called Dungeon Defenders 2. I, I've never played that. I have no idea what that game is, but... Pretty, it's pretty fun little mini uh, mini event, I guess, that you can that you can do. Plus, we can use these sentries um, pretty much all the time now as well. Okay, wave six. Here we go. It'd be cool if I could drop all these guys into my uh, volcano trap, but apparently, um, apparently lava doesn't damage them. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know how that works, but apparently they're immune to that. And I'm not even sure. I'm not even sure I could. Uh, I'm not even sure it would allow me to open the pit up. To be honest, I haven't tried it or anything, but because. You have to have fairly level surface to even start the event. Man, I'm doing so much damage right now. This is pretty crazy. More than uh, almost 2,000 damage a second here. Okay, that's wave six pretty much done. We're just going to clean up these stragglers over here. Feel like... Uh, Feel like we're doing pretty well so far. Let's just grab these uh, mana crystals. And uh, we should be able to put a couple more sentries down. This is the hard one though. Wave 7. Haven't managed to beat it yet. So we've got to try and kill those. Uh, there's Wivens. Oh, we've got an ogre over here. Um, okay, just make sure they're not creeping up from behind first. Now we've really got to focus this guy. Like, they have so much health. It's pretty crazy. Oh no, he just threw something at me. Oh no! I'm pretty sure he got me with that debuff. Come on, i got to kill this guy. Let's put another... Try the Meteor stuff. The Meteor stuff does a lot of damage, but the trouble is I've got some platforms up here in this arena that uh, kind of block it every now and then. Oh no, please don't dive bomb. Uh, uh, so close, come on. 99%. Holy crap. Oh no, they're going to destroy the crystal. Oh, I got killed. Oh, did we do it? 100%. I think we beat it. Yeah! Nice! My sacrifice was not in vain. <laughs> oh, that is so good, guys. You have got no idea. What did we get here? The Phantom Phoenix bow. Apprentice's scarf. Increases min uh, number of sentries. Minion damage. Creeper egg. 
Summons a pet Flickawick to provide light. So we get a light pet. That's pretty awesome. I wonder what this bow's like. It looks pretty badass. Uh, harness is the power. Let's see. Let's try this out. I'm not really doing a ranged character, but um, we'll see what it's like. Oh, it just fires fire arrows. Okay. It looks like it turns normal arrows. Oh, what the? Oh my goodness. Like every third shot is is a, like a phoenix type. I wonder how much damage that does. It's kind of interesting. Uh, let's try this um, flicker week thing out. Oh, okay. It's like a little... It's like, like a little, uh, I don't know what you'd call that thing, um, ghoul, a little spooky dude with a candle on his head. Flies around, gives me some light. Nice. Hopefully this is going to be an upgrade to my current light pet. Oh, I'm so glad, guys. You ha you have no idea how many attempts that took me to beat that. Um, but it was kind of good because I was um, grinding some of the... Uh, I was grinding some of the Defender's uh, medals anyway. Um, we've got 88 now, actually. I think that might be enough to get the Defender's Forge. If I recall correctly, we're getting a lot of these banners as well. For the Aetherian um, monsters. Um, pretty much got most of them now. Which is pretty cool. Um, hopefully they actually affect... Give me the buff uh, against the um, Old Ones army uh, monsters. I'm not sure though because... I noticed that it didn't really seem to show it on the banner buffs. I'm just going to check down here and see how the uh, lava moss is going. Okay, it is spreading. It's spreading on both sides. That's interesting. It looks pretty good though, doesn't it? I like that. It's probably going to take a while to spread down the whole length of the uh, elevator though. Um, okay, let's junk this. So I probably will grind the Old One's Army a bit more here while it's at stage 2 because I want to save up enough Defender Medals to be able to go straight to the Tier 3 sentries once we unlock Tier 3 Old One's Army. I'm not sure when that happens, but uh, I don't want to have to grind the way I did this time at stage 2. <laughs> anyway, I'll do that between episodes probably because I think we've had enough of the Old One's Army for this episode. And let's spend the Defender Medals here that I've got. I'm tempted to see what these Old Ones Army style armor sets are like. It's One of the annoying things with Terraria is it doesn't actually tell you the set bonus until you equip it. So you know what, let's just, let's just straight up buy the Defender's Forge. Because I think that's going to give us another placeable inventory. Um, which is going to be pretty awesome. Um, and we'll put all the spare stuff in this chest up here, I think. Okay, I think it's time to fight a boss here in Terraria. And we're going to start here with Queen Slime. And I've got uh, three of the items here, the gelatin crystals that are needed to summon her. And uh, all my buff potions and stuff ready to go as well. Um, I've also reforged my infinite Tome of Wisdom to Mythical as well as the Flame Burst Cane. Um, but apart from that, um, we're pretty much going to be using the standard stuff here. So let's get a few buffs going. And uh, I believe we have to summon her over in the Hallow, um, which is over in this area. So we'll head over to the Snow Pylon, I think is the closest area. And we'll head up here to, to the Hallow and summon her. I'm not sure if you can leave the Hallow when you're fighting her. Um... So I guess we'll figure that out as we go. Yeah, well, uh, we'll see what happens. So uh, we're in the hallow right now. Uh, let's do it. Take our buffs. Where is she? Where is she going to spawn? There she's down there. Get as much damage as we can on her early on here. Okay. 
Now I am wearing my regular, my regular uh, Terra Spark boots right now. Hopefully, I still have enough vertical damage to uh, to get the job done here. In fact, I should be putting a few clouds up here. So apparently one of the big hazards in this fight is uh, all of the little slimes that she drops. Um, they are pretty intense, I gotta say, but um, we'll see how we go with this. So far it's not too bad and she's nearly at half health. Let's drop uh, a couple more of these up here. I might even put down the flame burst rod. But uh, looks like this fight might not be too bad. Okay, she's in the second phase now, though. So I'll just try and run her back and forth through the uh, through the clouds. I might refresh these actually. Great thing about this rainbow rod is that it's uh, it does pretty much home in on the target, which is pretty awesome actually. I think we'll be okay actually, this fight's a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. I guess we have some pretty half decent gear, at least uh, you know, this stage, for this stage of the fight and stuff like that. Let's try and avoid damage here. Yeah, I think we're going to cruise through this fight actually. Yeah, we did it! Nice! That was, uh, that was a pretty good fight. It's a little bit harder than the uh, King Slime fight, obviously, but with the gear that we've got, it actually wasn't too bad. Plus, I had quite a lot of buffs going and stuff like that, if I'm honest about it. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, I really like this uh, Infinite Tome of Wisdom. It's really good crowd control um, weapon, which is why I guess it drops from the Old One's Army event. But um, uh, I think we can fight her a couple more times here and just see uh, if we get we, we get some more loot out of it. Um, since we've still got a lot of our buffs, a lot of our buffs going. Yeah, we did it. Nice. That's a pretty cool fight. I like that. I like that fight a lot. She's pretty fast as well. Um, let's he head back to base though and check out our loot. So, what did we get from the Queen Slime fight? Let's just uh, let's just check out the treasure bags. I've got two, two treasure bags to open here. Um, let's trash some of this stuff here. So, let's open the first one here. We got Crystal Assassin Hood, Crystal Assassin Shirt. We got Quick Volatile Gelatin. Re releases Volatile Gelatin period periodically that damages enemies. So this looks like it's um, an, an accessory. That's pretty interesting. Uh, the Hook of Dissonance teleports you to the location of the hook. Uh, we'll test that out in a second as well. That looks pretty cool. Uh, let's see what else we get here from the other treasure bag. And we got the pants. So we got the full Crystal Assassin set. 12 defense, 14 defense, 10 defense. Wow, that's quite a lot more defense than this set right here, actually. Um, I wonder what the set bonus is for this. So it says, set bonus, 10% increased damage and crit chance. So just flat increased damage, increased crit damage, or increased crit chance, increased movement speed by 15%. Um... It looks pretty cool as well, actually, this set. But, so 61 defense versus 56. But this one does give me quite a lot more mana, though. That's the thing. Like, without this set on, I've got way less mana to work with. Um, let's see here. And does this give me any... 12% increased magic damage. So I still think this set, except for the speed, is better right now. This uh, giant tortoise is trying to get to me over here. Let's just deal with you. Chuck a couple of these up. Maybe put this down here. Anyway, I don't think he can get over. 
They have some mad ninja skills, these tortoises, though. Like, that spin jump that they do is pretty crazy, actually. Anyway, what else did we get here? We got another hook of dissonance. We got a uh, sparkle slime balloon. Consumable, filled with party girl bathwater. Interesting. Gelatinous pillion. Summons a rideable winged slime mount. Wow, that is cool. And then if we use the gelatinous pillion. So it's, it doesn't go up. And how do we fly this thing? Okay. So it's more or less just a limited... It's almost like a double jump type thing. So it's, it does work a little bit like the uh, slime mount in that it, it does damage to enemies if you jump on them. Oh, we've got that cool um, floating lantern backdrop here as well. That's pretty awesome. Because it's the first time I've beaten Queen Slime. Yeah, I don't know. It's um, it's an interesting mount. Um, it looks like it might give us some speed. Some vertical speed similar to the Slime mount as well. So that's pretty cool. Let's test it out down the... Um, down the um, shaft. Maybe, maybe down the elevator shaft. Actually, you know what? No, we'll go down this one. Because <laughs> I want to go down here anyway to test the hooks out. Okay. I don't know. It's too short of a shaft to, um, to be able to tell that how fast that was. Let's try this one. It does look like fairly fast full speed. Um, let's test out the hook as well. The hook looks pretty interesting. So right now... Right now, this is about the limit of the aluminum hook. Um, if we equip the hook of dissonance... Oh, it is longer. That's interesting. It's not a double hook though. I think it's a single hook by the looks of it. Which is fine. Um, let's see how far back we can stand with this one. Okay, that's interesting. So about here, I think it was. And if we equip the aluminum hook again. It's just barely... It's just barely longer. Um, it's pretty cool how you can just like phase through things though with this thing. Let's kill these things off. Die. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. It's pretty cool. It is pretty cool. I could see it sort of being useful in boss fights and stuff like that, I guess. Maybe we'll use this for a while, actually. We'll use the Hook of Dissonance. Um, and I'm not sure what this is supposed to... <laughs> I'm not sure what this stuff is supposed to do. The, uh... Sparkle Slime Balloon. I think it's just a cosmetic... type effect. Yeah, I don't know. It's a pretty gross idea, actually. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about that. Where will we put this? We'll just put it in the... It's not really an explosives, but... I might put it in here. Interesting. Oh, maybe I'll put it... Yeah, I'll just, I'll just leave it in here. Uh, what else do we get? So we got this thing here. The volatile gelatin. And we got, of course, a couple of Queen Slime Relics. Um, and that's about it. That's about it. So another thing I've been working on, guys, is uh, trying to defeat the Dread Nautilus. Uh, 
during a blood moon. So <laughs> I've decided to uh, sleep through the day here, and I actually have the um, Blood Moon summoning item, um, the Bloody Tear. So we are actually prepared right now. Uh, I've kind of uh, honed this little ocean area here for the fight. Let's just quickly head back though to the jungle to get my buffs um, super quick, because one thing I don't have is the um, these buff stations. Make sure that's shut. But yeah, I've been sort of honing the way that this um, this little box works over here. I've got rid of a lot of the, the um, platforms that I had here because I found the Blood Moon monsters were coming over and causing me grief, particularly the clown with his grenades and stuff like that. Um, I'm just going to put some chum in the water. Okay, so I think we can summon the Blood Moon now. And... Uh, because the Blood Moon's just way too rare, so I thought I'd just summon it myself. Now, you notice I've also got um, some honey in here. Um, I've got uh, campfire and all that stuff, uh, obviously. The um, heart lanterns, and uh, I've got some buff potions happening as well. So hopefully we can catch this Dread Nautilus pretty quick here. The oh, there we go. This thing has a lot of health, though, and <laughs> I've been... Um, I've been a bit unfortunate with fighting this thing so far. I've kind of messed up a few times and run out of time and stuff like that. And uh, one of the th one of its abilities is to reflect damage. It's kind of hard to, for at least for me, to figure out when he like decides to do that. I think it's when he faces away from me, maybe, because uh, I've killed myself with my own meteors from him reflecting it back at me. So I've pretty much just completely enclosed the um, this safety box now. Hopefully we can get this done. We did manage to catch him nice and early in the Blood Moon night. Um, I'm not I'm not even taking that much damage right now. The only time he can hit me is when he does that circle thing where he goes through the blocks like that. But I think with our buffs and our regen and everything, we might actually be okay. Here we go here. Hopefully... It's really hard to position those Nimbus clouds while I'm in this box without exposing myself to damage. But yeah, he's a, he's got so much health. I think he's got like 21,000 health here in Master Mode. I think we've got this though. We've got this. I really like the Meteor stuff. It's pretty awesome for this sort of thing, actually. You can't hide from me, Dread Nautilus. Okay, he's nearly done. There's a couple of items I really want to get off him as well. Um, okay, come on. We got this. Just a little bit of health left. Yes! Now, what did we get? Did we get anything good? Let's go down and get the loot. Oh, wow! I already... I can already see what we got. We got the Sanguine Staff, which is pretty incredible. Uh, that was... Wow, that was my first Dread Nautilus kill, guys, and I got a Celestial Sanguine Staff. This is actually a pretty awesome summon, I believe. Yeah, look at that. It's, so we can summon him in some little bats that fly around, and they actually do, uh, do a lot of damage. Let's see what else we can catch here, though, since it's a Blood Moon. I don't really, uh, I don't really want to catch the eel too much, because, uh... I haven't had a good experience with it so far. It's pretty tough. But uh, there's a couple of other Blood Moon fish that we could um, could take take out. I think they have a couple of... Like the Zombie Merman. Um, uh, let's just drop the line in again. Um, the Zombie Merman. Um, I can't remember which ones are the hard mode ones. I know the Blood Eel is. The Dread Nautilus is. And it might be... 
Sanguine shark, is that a thing? Let's see what we can catch here. There's the zombie merman again. Yeah, I think he might be the uh, pre-hard mode blood moon fish. Let's just take him out anyway. Man, these little uh, these little sanguine bats are pretty good. They're super fast. See if there's any loot down here that I missed. Just hoover all this up here. But yeah, it's much easier when you don't have the um, all the uh, regular Blood Moon monsters walking across the, um, the platforms. It's only the flying ones you have to worry about, really. Let's see what else we can catch here. There's the Blood Eel again. Um... Well, we got the Sanguine Staff. That was really the main thing that I wanted. Um, there's a couple of other items. I think there's a tool you can get that would be pretty cool. Oh, there's the Zombie Merman right there. I think that's the same one though, isn't it? That we just had a second ago. Um, I think the one I want is the Shark one. Let's see if we can catch that one before the Blood Moon's over here. Wandering Eye Fish. That's pre-hard mode. Pretty sure there's only the three hard mode type type blood moon fish. Mithril crate. Come on. Let's see what we can catch here. I might not actually get anything before the blood moon's over here. I don't really want to bother with the uh, pre hard mode blood moon fish. I haven't even tried the lava fishing yet. Oh, hemoglobin shark. That's what I wanted. Okay, let's let's try and fight this thing. Um, <laughs> I don't know if it's gonna come over here, so we'll we'll get out of the safety box here. See if we can fight this thing. How much health has this thing got? Fifteen thousand. So wow, that's okay. It's like um, two thirds of the health of the dread nautilus, but. I think it's going to be a lot easier. The Dread Nautilus, Nautilus is like almost like the boss of the uh, Blood Moon fish, even though you don't get a trophy for it. Which is, I don't know why you don't get a trophy for the Dread Nautilus. I'd say it's um, as hard as uh, Queen Slime. Plus, you have to like very specifically catch it during a blood moon and stuff sort of like a it's sort of like an easy uh, version of Duke Fish Run I guess from what I've seen oh do we get anything? I don't think we got anything off the uh, off that guy what did we get? anything? oh blood moon monolith I think we got from the dread nautilus as well which is pretty sweet but I'm not seeing anything from the actual shark. Oh well, I can't really complain. That was pretty. Uh, that was some pretty amazing luck to get the uh, sanguine stuff straight away. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to call that a successful blood moon fishing trip right there. All right. So guys, as you can see, or you may have noticed, uh, I've been messing around with dyes a little bit here in game. In fact, uh, I even applied some uh, pet shampoo dyes to uh, to my sanguine stuff minion. So uh, this is one. Uh, what's this one called? Uh, this is one called the Mirage dye. Um, and yeah, I think it looks pretty cool. It's kind of like a multicolored one. Um, and I also still wanted to keep my hair. The same green color, but um, I put a a dye on it called uh, acid dye, and it's kind of got a wavy, pretty cool shimmery effect on it, which is pretty awesome. And I've got a similar um, sort of effect on my wings as well, because um, I put the the mirage dye on these, but uh, it's, it's a little bit harder to see because they still look pretty much the same color, which I like because I like the flame. I like the flame wings, but uh, as you can see, they kind of have uh, multicolored sparkle and they have that shimmer going on as well. Um, so yeah, I think it looks pretty good. And uh, 
Looking at my die collection, I probably should start collecting or trying to collect more of these strange plants to get the really cool dies. Because I've got some of these flat looking dies, like the red and stuff like that. Yellow. Um, stuff like that from, you know, from the marigolds and stuff that, and the blueberries and stuff that you can pick up. Because you can craft these over here at the die vat. And uh, into these sort of standard colors. But um, the really cool ones I noticed um, you tend to get from trading in the uh, the strange plants with the uh, with the dye dude, um, the dye merchant or whatever. So uh, yeah, let's uh, let's just stick uh, whatever dyes uh, we have in these slots here and try and get that achievement happening. I don't know if we did we get the achievement. <laughs> Maybe this doesn't count. Maybe this doesn't count unless I take this out. We've got to die in every one of our slots right now, so... Theoretically, I should have got that achievement, right? Let's just have another look at that one. Uh, equip a die in every possible die slot. So... Oh, hang on. Maybe on, maybe on these as well, right? Let's just start. Uh, let's just try this out here. There we go. <laughs> cool. So I can actually dye my pets and stuff. That's pretty interesting. That's, um... It's, I kind of like the colors that they were already, though. Particularly the, um, this guy here. The, um, what's he called? The, um, the lightning carrot. He looks pretty cool already. So I'm going to take these off. Oh, I can dye my minecart as well. That's interesting. Um, and we'll take all these out as well. So, I do want to get some cooler dies, but, but, um, the only, uh, really good ones I've got right now are blue flames, pretty cool, I think, but I can't really think of where I want that. Maybe if I tried that on my, I don't know, um, what does it actually look like? Oh, it looks pretty good, actually. Um... Where can I put it, though? It's hard to tell. It's hard to tell how much effect it's having, it's having here. Um, so, yeah. Maybe I'll leave that one off for now. But if I can find a really cool one for my wings or um, something like that, we'll, 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 con we'll change them around. Um, I might try it on, I might try that blue one on my, um, my light pet here and see what it looks like on him. Um, where is it? Blue flame. Oh yeah, it makes a bit of a difference. <laughs> kind of. Might leave it on, um... The creeper egg then and uh we can even put it on stuff like the hook that's kind of interesting so right now this hook it's really hard to even see what this hook looks like because it's so quick but we might leave it off that um the other thing that i was looking at guys uh let's just go talk to the guide real quick and i have a ton of these shadow scales um i think it was from defeating the eater of worlds bunch of times a while back but uh, I was looking at what we can make with these um, so we've progressed past the nightmare pick that pickaxe and stuff like that but there's these these items here which I think are new oh well you know they came out with the last update 1.4 and uh, yeah void bag and void vault so um, it says if carried it may pick up items when your inventory is full so that sounds like a, yet another inventory <laughs> So we'll have the safe, we'll have the money trough, uh, we've also got in here, um, we've got the Defender's Forge, um, so yeah, pretty cool, pretty cool. So uh, we might try and craft this, and I believe that it just requires, um, let's have a look here, they just require jungle spores, shadow scales, and bones, um, which I might even have here, let's have a look. I think I've got the bones. I'm not so sure about the, um, I'm not so sure about the, um, 
Let's just have a look in here. Oh, I do have some spores in here. Okay. Cool. So I think I have everything I need for that. I I'm pretty sure I got the bones right here. So uh, we should be able to craft this. But um, where do we craft it though? Let's have a quick look here. Um, oh, requires objects, steam and altar. Okay, well, we just got the achievement for the dyes, um, die hard. So I was looking at this one as well. That is sort of the suggested next progression achievement, um, which is Begone Evil, which says to smash a demon or crimson altar with a powerful holy hammer. So if we're going to go craft this at a demon altar, we might as well um, actually do that one. Um, I don't really need to smash the altars to get ores because I've got tons of ore from uh, fishing already. But we're just going to do it purely for the achievement. Um, and we'll spawn, we'll spawn some ores in the world because I think there is an achievement related to that as well from what I've seen. So um, why not? We'll, we'll grab our pwn hammer from defeating the wall of flesh. And uh, we'll head over to the uh, the corruption area. Oh yeah, you can definitely see the effect of that that die on my uh, creeper egg pet light pet there. Looks pretty cool. Um, all right, so we should be able to find ourselves a demon altar down here. Let's see, let's see if we can find. That might be this might be a little bit too far down. Let's try back up top here. So this one here I might actually keep because it's a good, uh, convenient one for crafting right there. But we'll go find some others here and smash those. And I think in this, uh, in this seed, the drunk seed, um, there we go. Be gone, evil. We, what did we get there? Palladium? We can actually smash six of these to get every kind of, uh, hard mode ore there is available. So that's three, four... Five, six. So that should give us um, all of the hard mode ores that are available in the game, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. Just kill these things. Um, oh yeah, we're going to craft the uh, the void stuff. So let's go do that. Get out of it. Um, I might put a couple of uh, clouds up with the Nimbus rod here. Bit of defense. And uh, yeah, let's craft this thing. So, one void bag. That's pretty awesome. And one void vault. Uh, can be used to store your items. Will contain items picked up by the void bag. So, can we actually access this? Oh, we can access it. That's interesting. So we can access this on the fly, sort of like the uh, the money trough. But then there's one you can... There's like the vault you can also place as a physical item, I guess, at your base or wherever. Um, that's pretty awesome. Let's, um, let's find a good place to put this. Um, maybe I'll put it just, just here somewhere. So let's see. We'll shift some of this stuff around here. Um, I probably want to have it central, right? So, what about, like, right here? I might not be able to get it exactly central, though. But, I guess that'll do there. And, what do we, what do we got to put down here? Let's just sh shift some of these things around a little bit here. Um... So I've got the cake there as a speed buff. We'll put that um, put that back here. Then we've got the bewitching table, pretty important one, and the crystal ball. We'll put there, and then we've just got the um, the peace candle, which can sort of go anywhere, but um, we might as well put it back down here uh, like that. Awesome! I think that looks pretty good right there. Nice. So that's pretty cool. And we got some, we got, we've still got tons of shadow scale left, left over. 
Well, for a second there, I thought it was a slime rain, but it actually isn't. Okay, we'll put the rest of that stuff back in here. Um, yeah, so that's pretty cool. Now we've got a we've we've got a void vault and we've got the defenders forge. Um, hopefully that means I'm not going to have too many problems with uh, what? Oh, that's um, that's a uh, seahorse right there. That's pretty cool. These seem to be pretty rare. I wonder if we can put these in, um, I wonder if we, we can put these in a jar or something. Let's just see if we can, um, make a seahorse jar. I imagine you can, right? Um, maybe not, though. <laughs> I'm not seeing the option here. Let's go talk to the guide and see, see if there's any option here to um, craft something with the. Oh, it says it's it says it's a material. Oh, okay. We need a seahorse cage, so a terrarium. That seems pretty cool. The I just wish the terrariums weren't so big because they're kind of giant. They don't. I mean, it, I guess it gives the animals inside. Uh, Lots of space, which is pretty cool, but, uh, let's see, where is the glass at? I think we need glass for this. Um, let's make a few of these, actually. And what else have I got in the, in the way of the critters? Let's just make that. So it comes with water already, which is pretty cool. Uh, I already had a seahorse there. We've got an emerald bunny. We've got an owl, <laughs> an owl cage. That's pretty cool. And we'll make the um, we'll make the emerald bunny thing as well. I don't know where I'm gonna pull put, put all this stuff, but I don't know how big these are either. How big is this one? Oh, this one's giant. Look at that. Um, about this one. That one's big as well. That one's that one's big. Hmm. They're all they're all pretty big actually. Maybe we'll move the frog one. Um, just to mix things up, I think we'll put a seahorse there like that. That's pretty cool. Bit of, bit of an aquatic thing up there. And over on this one, we could just put the frog over here. Actually, let's move the, um, pink jellyfish jar. I do like that a lot, but, um, we'll put the owl up here because this is like the bird area here we got the um the goldfinch over there we got the owl up there nice and we'll find somewhere for the pink jellyfish jar as well i guess um i could even put that over here i guess um let's see where can i put this I'll just put it there for now. <laughs> so we've added to our menagerie. Menagerie? Menagerie. I'm not sure exactly. Oh, there's uh there's a thing right there. I can make some blue dye out of that one, I think. Um, yeah, there was um there was something else I was gonna do as well. Let's just check this dude, see if he's got any fishing quests. Oh, he's got the bunny fish. Interestingly, I I caught that was the last quest as well. He's got it uh he's got it um twice in a row. Kind of interesting. Um, so he's just given me all the angler stuff that I've already got, though. Um, which is a little bit annoying. But um, we'll stick that in there, I guess. And um, let's just put this... Uh, these. Actually, you know what? I should put these in the critters, in the critters area. The gold frog I can probably put somewhere. Oh, by the way, this, um, this thing over here... Let's zoom zoom out a bit. So um I think this is called Yeah, a monolith. The Blood Moon Monolith, right? We got this from the um the Dread Nautilus. And if I right click on this, check it out. It uh it actually it actually makes everything look like it's a blood moon. Not exactly like it's a blood moon though, because the water I've noticed doesn't change colour to red, but it just makes everything look a little bit 
like red hued, which is pretty interesting. And it goes all like, uh, it goes all bloody and dripping. So that's, that's pretty cool, actually. Um, I, I'm really glad I got that. That's, that's pretty sweet. Um, yeah, anyway, guys, that is where we are going to leave this episode for today. Um, I hope you have enjoyed this series so far. And in the next episode, I do want to uh, fight um, at least one more mechanical boss. We'll see how we go. Maybe even two, because I'd like to progress a little bit um, as far as the boss fights go. Um, and I'm feeling a lot more confident now as well. Um, as I'm getting used to some of these weapons, particularly the Rainbow Rod is pretty awesome. And I'm curious to see how stuff like the Tome of Wisdom and the um, Nimbus Rod will go against something like the, um, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the Destroyer being a worm type creature. But uh, then again, I might get destroyed. So we'll have to wait and see how things go. I might try and harvest some more strange plants in between episodes as well and see if I can get some cool... Um, some cool dyes and stuff. And I also want to make a few little modifications to the um, the monster um, grinder down below the jungle farm as well because uh, I want to try and experiment with using the um, Clintaminator um, to change biomes down there and try and get some different monsters spawning in as well, particularly stuff like um, from the Hallow and whatnot. So I think that would be pretty cool to uh, to try out. Um, but yeah, let's just put away the Pwn Hammer. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next one. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.